calling in. Uh, I was kind of explaining to the college gals, but I'll explain to everybody else really quick how tonight will look. Um, I have uh, a couple, a few questions kind of set up to go through with the, the college gals. So we were able to get five girls um, who are former Momentum players, ranging from Division One to D3. Um, so we're just excited to have people at every level here kind of just answering and fielding questions. Um, but before we hop into that, um, I just wanted to kind of preface with if you have questions that come up, Golly, am I this choppy to everybody? You sound good. You don't sound choppy. Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate the feedback because I my video is really choppy on my end. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to preface with anybody in the audience who has questions to ask. You can either type them in the chat or you can send them. You can email them. Or what we'll do is we'll do the raise hand feature after I um, ask my three questions. Um, so please, if you're thinking, if there's a burning question you have, please just hold on to it and if, feel free to ask any of the gals or you can get all of the girls' feedback at the end. But before we jump in, we do have a special guest. Um, Melissa is here joining us. I'm going to let her intro herself and kind of what, a little bit about what she does and no big deal, but her and I's backgrounds are pretty matching, so we're both pretty neato, so that's great. But um, Melissa, go ahead and take the floor for a minute or two. Let us know what you're doing here and kind of how you can help our Momentum gals. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for letting me join today. Um, I am just, I want to support you girls. I'm a real estate agent in the Denver market. And so what I want to do is offer some free lessons to girls who want to register. And so in the chat, I'll put a link in there for you to click on and the girls can register with any, have a private lesson with any coach of their choice. And I'll be raffling those off. Okay. So I just want to support you guys, like you said, and I wish you the best of luck. And I'm so glad you, you guys are continuing this form. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. Yeah. Like Melissa said, she'll post that in the chat. So if you want to register or enter for that, go ahead and um, click that in the chat. Um, okay. So thank you, Melissa, again, for being here. I know it's a uh, Sunday nights are kind of hard. So I just want to thank everybody for being here. We'll make sure we kind of keep this probably to about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Um, and if you don't mind, we'll just go over a little bit of etiquette. If you aren't speaking, if you could put your um, speaker on mute or the microphone on mute, um, just so there's no like background noise or kind of reflective stuff. Um, and just in case anybody just joined, um, I, again, have a couple prefaced questions that I'll ask the girls. Um, yep, still, still some trickling in, guys. Sorry about this. I'm having to admit all of them, so. Okay. Um, so I'll ask prefaced questions, but if you have any questions for the girls uh, moving forward, please uh, feel free to ask those after these three questions we go through. Um, before we do that, so I know everybody's screen looks totally different, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to call on the girls. So Peyton, Elsa, Noel, Maddie, Inky, I have all of you in this weird order. So I think what we'll do is I'll call on you. And then for the next question, we'll go the opposite direction. So if we start with Peyton and end with Noel, the next question will start with Noel and end with Peyton. Does that make sense? <laughs> cool. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and just go around and introduce yourselves, where you play college volleyball, and or where you played, and um, what year you are in school, or what you're doing now, now that you're done with college ball. So, Peyton, let's start with you. Um, I'm Peyton Burgotch. I am a freshman at, I play at Ole Miss in Mississippi, and uh, I'm a middle blocker right side. I don't Anything else, Jess? Um, did you say your year? Freshman. Yes. Freshman. Okay. Good job. Yeah. Yep. Position is great too. Thanks, P. Um, Maddie, why don't we go with you, sister? Um, hi, I'm Maddie Bustler. Um, I just graduated from NJIT, it's New Jersey Institute of Technology, and I was an outside hitter. Cool. And what are you doing now? Um, I'm bartending right now, but I'm actually doing some stuff for personal training. Awesome. And you're coaching at Momentum right now, right? I am. Yeah, I'm the assistant on the 16 twos. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for being here, Maddie. Elsa, you're up, sister. Um, hi, I'm Elsa. I um, go to Angela State University, and I'm an outside hitter. I'm a freshman, too. Sorry. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Elsa. 
All right, all right, Noel, your turn, sister. Um, my name is Noel Knudsen. I'm a junior at Anderson University in South Carolina. Uh, middle blocker. I'm studying to be a sports psychologist, but I have an internship this summer as a personal trainer. So we'll see how that goes. Perfect. Good for you for that internship. Um, Inky, you're up, girl. Hi, um, I'm Inky. I don't know if my thing's delayed, so if it is, sorry. Um, I go to Stevens Institute of Technology, which is in New Jersey, and I'm a sophomore studying biomedical engineering. Yeah. Oh, and um, I'm a setter DS. Yeah. Perfect. And you're not delayed, Inky. Your picture looks great. You look wonderful, girl. So um, thank you all for being here. Um, we'll just jump right into the questions. Oh, and just to preface, I didn't have the girls say their division levels, but Peyton and Maddie, both Division One. correct me if I'm wrong, D1, Elsa and Noel, D2, Inky's at the D3 level. So if you have any questions prefacing to any of those specific division levels at the end, those are kind of your girls in those division areas. All right, so Peyton, we'll start back up with you. First question is, what's the greatest tool or habit that helped you most during your college recruiting process? Uh, yeah, I wish I was more consistent with emails, but I think that was what helped me the most, just reach out to coaches. Um, and I know the big fear behind emails is, am I emailing too big or too small? So I sent a lot of emails to a lot of schools that now where I am, I would have never gone or never even thought about going, but it does help to get your name out there. Um, and I actually really enjoyed doing phone calls too, because I felt like it was more, more, more personal to me and getting to know the coach in the program. So cool. lots of emails. Yeah. So how many emails do you think you cast like Broadnet? Like, do you think there was like 50 that you sent overall or how many do you think? Um, probably around there, more or less. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. We, we encourage a lot of emailing, but I like the phone call and personalization of part of it, too. Yeah. Um, thanks for sharing. Maddie, What? same question. Do you need me to reread, or you still got it? I got it. Okay. Um, so I actually had a recruiter when I was in high school. Um, I didn't end up getting a recruiter until halfway through my junior year, but prior to that, I had sent out probably like 150 emails to schools, was just doing phone calls and stuff like that, and had a lot of responses back from like D2, D3 colleges, and then I got a recruiter who helped out a lot with, I mean, he was one that kind of like took the video for me, would um, kind of make the videos for me, and then he's actually the one that helped me get into D1, so I think that was probably the biggest tool for me, was taking some of the pressure off of me and how letting someone else kind of help us do that. Okay, cool. Yeah, right. thanks for that insight. Um, do you mind sharing who, like what uh, organization you used? Um, his name is Jack Grunland. He's okay. his exact name. I can always get the info for you if you want me to send it to you guys. Okay, perfect, thanks. Yeah, it is nice to sometimes have that outside help. Um, just because I know you girls are busy, especially with school and parents are working other jobs too. So sometimes having outside help is very useful. Um, all right, Miss Elsa, same question to you. Um, I kind of was in the same boat as Maddie. I used the same guy. I um, also had a lot of help from Jess. And um, before every tournament, I would uh, email coaches. Like my goal was to email like around five to 10 schools before every tournament. And then um, I would use that highlight film from uh, my recruiter then, um, like Peyton said, too, I really liked phone calls because they really um, kind of put a name with the voice and help personalize everything. But, yeah, I think the recruiter helped a lot. Hmm. Cool. Okay. Thanks for that feedback. And I also liked your intentionality, intentionality Elsa, just in regards to before tournaments, sending those emails um, just to make sure they're, you're on their radar. So that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Noel. So my biggest recruiter was actually my dad. Um, at every like game tournament scrimmage, he would be in the back holding up an iPad videotaping. Mm -hmm. um, and so I took clips and put it together myself to create like my own highlight film. Um, but my biggest thing would probably be getting on top of the recruiting process early. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't commit until 
February of my senior year. So it was super, super late. And if there was like one thing that I would have done earlier, like done, redone, I guess, Mm -hmm. um, would have been starting at least a year earlier. I was super late to the process and I feel like I might have missed out on a lot, lot of different like opportunities. Um, so I just getting ahead because it doesn't hurt to be early. Like it doesn't hurt to start at any time. And I'd rather have done that then than be late and miss opportunities. Mm. Mm. That's such great insight. I love both pieces of that, of having your parents, wanting like your dad be involved for recording. And then also, yeah, it's never too early to start. Even if you're just like, hey, let's maybe start looking at film or writing up an email. So that's great, great advice. Um, and what's funny is I signed in April of my senior year. So you want to talk about late? Yeah. Girls get started early. Um, all right, Miss Inky, what do you got to say? Um, I actually agree a lot with Noel. I started really late cause I wasn't sure if I wanted to play in college yet. Um, and even if you're not sure, but there's even that sliver chance of like, oh, like what if I don't play in college? Like I'm going to miss it. That kind of thing. I would definitely send out at least emails to schools you're really interested in early on, because I think that was one of my biggest regrets. Um, And I got really lucky um, that Jessica actually had contact with the school I'm playing at now, because I didn't get to commit to them till literally decision day senior year. Um, And I was just lucky enough that I already gotten in academically. So definitely start on that early enough. And then I was also very lucky that every year, um, there was always one girl whose dad was filming and they always shared the films with us. So I just put my little highlight reel together and sent that to every coach at the beginning of my senior year, highlighting every tournament I was playing at. And then I guess like, especially right now with COVID films really important just because not every coach is going to be able to go to your tournaments, even in general. Um, And that was just like really lucky that they were like, it's really good that you have film because if not, we might not have taken you. Yes. And I super appreciate you saying that Inky, cause you're right. Like, even if we don't have like the, the dad, like, no, I'm super glad your dad was like super involved with recording. Like, that's amazing. But what you can always do is like, see if there's one team parent, like, and this is for everybody like listening right now. Like if there's one team parent that's willing to record, most likely you can easily get access to that film. So I loved how advantageous you were of getting that film. So And I want to put in a plug for people like Inky, like academics are so huge, like because like Inky was such a stellar student, like she was an easy person to talk to coaches about because it's like, she's got a great GPA, she's in great classes, like test scores are awesome. So just a plug from one adult instead of just your mom and dad saying, keep up your grades, everybody. (laughs) Okay, thanks for that feedback, Inky. Um, Inky, we'll start back with you and end with you, Peyton. Um... What are some aspects you love about your school specifically? And then um, what are some aspects that are challenging that you have found about your school specifically? Sure. So uh, going back to academics, um, the one really nice thing about playing D3 is you are able to focus on academics a lot more, I feel like, compared to other divisions. Not saying um, every school does prioritize academics because you are a student athlete, But um, I would say that was one thing I really like about my school is if I'm really like slammed with classes and stuff, coaches are very flexible with that at my school. And then specifically to Stevens, I love the location and how small the school is. Um, I always thought I wanted to go to a big public school, but like going going to a smaller school, you feel more connected with your community in general, your professors, your teammates, even just the other student athletes. Like we have such a big support system between other sports. Everyone's always watching each other's games. And I really like that. And then also my school is just right across New York City. So that's always a big plus. Nice. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Um, Let's see. Let's go Noel. What do you got? So I was a little bit opposite. I always wanted like a big school, lots of people. Um, And I ended up at Anderson, which is 3,600 students. So it's super small and everyone knows everyone. You see everyone every day. Um, So that was definitely like a big change. Um, But I absolutely love, like I didn't think I would, but half of my teachers and professors come to my volleyball games. 
and they're on the side and they ask about it the next day in class and they're like oh like you did really good oh like how is this team this team and they're involved in my life and I can like email them first name basis and they know who I am and they care and they want to see you personally get better because they care like you're not just another like number in their classroom you're like a student that they care about and want to perceive and but yeah um so that I really really like also my team is probably my closest family I love all of the girls on there like I'm actually so I live in an apartment and I live with two of my teammates and we've been together for three years now mm. and so I know that I always have someone close someone right there and so that relationship and that family support in the classroom and on the team and on the court and outside of it was huge um the biggest difference was I moved across the country 1300 miles away and I've lived in Colorado my whole life and so that was a really big change but I, I don't know I kind of like change and so it was a good culture shock difference I guess if that's the way to put it um but it was good to like see something new and experience something different even like if you're not sure about it so yeah awesome thanks for sharing I I know that cross-country trip has got to be hard that homesickness piece of it but I love that there's pros and cons about every size of school like I love that you get to see your professors at your games and that they do know you by name so I love that about that size of school so thanks for sharing uh Elsa um I was very um set on one thing like when I first started the recruiting process I saw I was very um like I wanted to go D1 no matter how bad the school was or I only wanted to go to certain states and so when I um, started being more realistic I was like oh I don't want to go to Texas like I started like ruling out different states and then like I had that phone call with my coach or with the coach I have now and and um, I realized like, oh, this could be like a good school for me because it was everything like he talked it up so much and like it's what I wanted to. So I really wanted to go to a D1 school because I was getting looks at these like smaller D1s. But um, I always ruled out Division two, And then um, it's just like my my school is good division one school and um a lower d1 school so it's kind of like that um d1 feel but like in a division two school divisions division two like size so i really like um kind of like that open like not to rule out everything so once i visited i liked the facilities i liked the level of play i liked um my team i liked everything about it so that's kind of my experience with it all elsa i really appreciate you speaking into that because i think and i have a lot of conversations with girls that come in and they're like i want to play d1 or like i'm dead set nothing below d2 and i think what stuff is like we get caught up and i remember our conversation elsa our one-on-one -on -one, and that evening literally that whole night was filled with you like do i commit to angelo do i wait because i want to go d1 and i just i remember that being a really big because like even right now you're a freshman and you're already playing right you you see court time yeah, I do. Okay, sorry. Um, so it's crazy that like, yes, I think we can go D1 and I, you can start as a freshman. You may, might not play till your junior, however it goes, but it's just what's the right fit for you. Despite that number on the division level, what has what you want to study, what feels like home and like who's going to challenge you. And you're right, you play for one of the best D2 programs in the nation. So um, I think that was a great testimony to that of division level doesn't mean everything just like what is the school like for you so thanks for sharing um maddie what do you got sister all righty so pretty much when i went through the whole process i was really just dead set on finding somewhere that had really good academics <laughs> um i could work hard to play my freshman in the early years and then um I guess really just somewhere that I enjoyed being at and I really just didn't want to stay in Colorado. So <laughs> I had pretty much 49 states to pick from outside of here. Um, but I ended up in New Jersey. So I'm actually really close to where Inky is, but 20 minute drive out to where she's at at school is where I was at. So same thing. I was 20 minute train ride into New York city. Hoboken was a great place to be. So it was just a really fun area to be in. 
Um, and then my school itself was considered medium, but within a, within athletics, it would look like a really small school. So we had a really small athletics program, even though we were D1, but the school itself was pretty big. And so in terms of I could walk around campus and not know everybody, but if I saw someone in athletics, I would know who they were. And so like, that was kind of cool because athletics is always more of a family. Um, and then... Yeah, I, I loved our academics and the way that they treated our academic program because they forced us, not forced, it's a bad word, but they uh, made us do team study hall. So we actually had a study hall area and as a team, you had to get six hours a week, eight hours a week, whatever it was, but you had to be there as a team. Um, and then like our thing was that we competed with other teams to see who had the highest GPA. And so women's volleyball always every year had the highest GPA along with women's soccer. So that was really good. Um, yeah, I think it was just, I liked the way that my school worked because it was a medium sized school, but it had a small school feel, but then also you could have a large school feel at the same time. So it was a really interesting place to be. Okay, cool. So <laughs> since you wanted to be far away from Colorado, did you never face any of the homesickness or did that still hit you even though you wanted to go out of state? Because I think that's a really good question to speak into because a lot of my girls come in that I meet with say, I'm like, okay, where do you want to be for college? And they're like, give me to the beach. I want to go coastal. Like, And that's probably about 80% of them. So you being a person that wanted to get out of state, how do you feel about that? And then did you ever hit any homesickness or like maybe I should have been closer to home either side of the scale? Um, me personally, I was on the far side of the scale of never being homesick. Um, even when I would come home for winter break and stuff like that, the three week of winter break was honestly too long for me to be home. <laughs> and I just wanted to go back to school. So I was just one that always wanted to kind of be out of the house. So. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you for the honesty. That's really great to know. Um, all right, Peyton, same question. Do you want me to reread it? No, you're good. I got you. <laughs> um, I love everything about my school. I originally, when I started my recruiting process, would have never even considered the South. Um, I didn't really email teams in the South until my, like late in my recruiting process until I committed. Um, and just like Maddie said, I w knew I wanted to get out of Colorado or from early in my recruiting process. And I also <laughs> have been on the far scale of being homesick, which is different than missing my family. I stand by that. I miss my family but I'm, I don't get homesick very often. Um, I One of my favorite things is probably the athletic culture. Um, going to a major athletic school, it's been super fun to just be around other people who are at that level and like support each other. So it's been fun to just kind of meet different people who um, you would have never met staying, like, staying in the same place in this like same bubble. Um, so that atmosphere is really fun and being able to experience football games and baseball games um, that are at this level too has been really fun. And everything that comes along with playing here has been kind of surreal. So experiencing that has been a lot of fun. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, my team, I, I know, like Noel said, I completely agree. My team is my family, 100%. love all of them. Um, which has made it a lot easier to not be homesick because I'm super close to everyone and it's been super easy to kind of dive into this in completely new world that has looked a lot different because of COVID. Um, and like everyone says, and you won't believe it until you get here, is your freshman year will be your hardest year probably. Um, and so it's been nice to have 13 girls that kind of walk alongside you um, and co a coaching staff that's super supportive and um, my big thing that I was really keen on was making sure that your coach, my coaches were personal on, on and off the court, that they didn't just care about the player side of me, but also wanted to kind of dive into the, like me outside of being a volleyball player. So that when, and that being the case, it's made it a lot easier to kind of make that transition so far away from home. Mm. Mm, I love that your coaches are personal. That's really awesome. And Peyton, you probably go to the biggest school out of like everyone here. Um, would you say there's any drawbacks, any challenges to a really big campus, a really big school? Um, I think for sure. And listening to some other people, I think it's a lot harder for teachers to be kind of personable, um, especially in going to a like big D1 football school is it's really easy for athletes to get a bad rap um, with some teachers. So that's been kind of interesting to explore. Um, but it, there are teachers that do care about you personally. And it's nice to have academic advisors that know you and have been 
like people, teachers understand athletics and just kind of what comes with it and how busy everything is. Um, I really, other than that, I love going to big school. I've always, I always kind of knew I wanted to go big, um, whether I play volleyball or not. So I, I love it. And I, it's also not for everyone. So I am leaning strong into, I think somebody mentioned it, that really the number in front of whatever school you go to, it doesn't matter. It's Ole Miss when I first came here, it was like, felt like home, which is so cheesy to say, but it really did. I didn't feel like, um, I didn't feel like I was missing something or that I felt like a small fish in a big pond. So, Hmm. That's so good. That's so good. Thank you for sharing. Um, all right, we'll move into our last question. And I'm going to start with Elsa because she's right in the middle. And then we'll come back and go Peyton, Maddie, Noel, Inky. So Elsa, so last question. So everybody, again, can be thinking in the audience if there's any questions you want to ask these girls. Uh, my last question is, what's one thing you recommend asking the coach and the players when you go on campus visits? So I'm a senior in high school and I'm going to visit um, XYZ College in Kansas. What is one thing on my campus visit that I should really focus on asking the coach and one thing I should ask the players when I'm there? Um, what I asked on every visit was, like to the coach, is I would always ask um, – where do you see me on your list? Like, where am I at? Because some coaches may say like, oh, well, you're the second girl I've offered. And like, to me, I was always like, like, that's okay, but I want to be that number one. So like, that kind of showed me where I was at on their list and what like I would be to them on the court in a couple of years. So that was my biggest um, question I would ask for the coach. And then the other question I would ask the coach would be um, probably, um, like what is your, like my class was 2020. So I would say like, what is your 2020 recruiting class looking like? Cause, um, uh, there's a lot of times where it's like, oh, we have, you're like our only player or like, we're only looking for an outside or we're looking for four outsides or we're looking for like, kind of that was a big role on me too. Cause it's like, I had to know who I was competing with if I was competing with two other outsides or four other outsides. So, um, that was a big, um, I knew where I was going with that. And then, um, what I would ask the players would be kind of like what they would do for fun and like how close they were. Cause that was a big part of, um, where I would choose my school is like how close the team was. And, um, for me, I always wanted a close team and my team is really close right now. We always hang out with each other, but, um, like when I went on my visit here, that was the first question I asked was like, what do you guys do as a team? Like, what do you guys do for fun? Um, like, where do you, where do you go? What do you do? Do you guys hang out all the time? And like that immediately they said yes. So, um, that's always what I would ask the players and coaches. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. I know a couple of you have touched on teammates and I think I just want to put that plug in there as well. Like one of the girls I played volleyball with was a bridesmaid in my wedding. So these are literally the girls that might be your friends for life. So when you go on your campus visits, if you don't really feel that great about anybody there, these are the girls you're going to be surrounded with like for a full-time job amount of time for four years straight. So um, I'll put that plug in because all of you girls have kind of touched on the teammate aspect. So Peyton, same question to you. What would you ask coach and players for these girls going on campus visits? Yeah, um, I will ditto both or all three of Elsa's things. Uh, I ask both those questions to the coach every time. Um, and the what did what your recruiting class for my class looked like was super important to me because we do we did come in with um, I'm one of seven for my class, which is like the biggest recruiting class they've had in a while. Um, and it's kind of flipped the, uh, us that so we have seven recruit, seven 2020 girls and a whole new coaching staff. So it's kind of flipped the culture of the program, which has been, was, was super nice to know coming in that, that we were going to be a big class. Um, did not know there would be a coaching change, but everything happens for a reason. <laughs> um, I, I, asked a lot um, what the culture of your program looked like and kind of what um, the team atmosphere was, what atmosphere you set in practice. Um, Cause that was super important to me. Not only with the team locker, like the locker room atmosphere that um, things weren't toxic, but also what kind of practice felt like um, because I'm a firm believer in um, once you stop loving it or having fun that it's not worth doing anymore. 
So it was really important to me to love it as long as I can and then um, go from there. So um, those two questions were for super big for me with the coach, um, where they see me kind of playing into their um, team, not only my freshman year, but future years. And um, if they saw me contributing right away, where they kind of saw my role in my role being, and those are still questions that you find yourself asking um, after the recruiting process when you get here. And then I asked the team a lot of the same questions, just kind of what they their atmosphere was like. Um, I asked some teams that I went on officials with or talked to uh, if they like the coaching staff, which some people will not be straight up with you, but um, it, that was always helpful because – you never know what you're getting yourself into. Um, so yeah, that's about what I asked them. Perfect. Yeah. I like both your girls' re um, responses about like, Hey coach, where am I realistically on your depth chart or how do you see me being an impact on your 2020 roster? So awesome. Maddie, what do you think? Um, all right. They, they saw, they already stole the ones that I was going to say, <laughs> um, but uh, other ones that I, tended to ask was I would always ask the coach like what their coaching style was mm. um and how they reacted to like things not getting done I guess so like if I get not like necessarily punishments but like consequences for the team and like how they reacted to that like are they yellers and screamers are they gonna just kind of um make you run is it like how did that go with coaching style and stuff like that um and then I I don't know if this applies to everybody, but like for me, I asked, and it was really important to me what our travel schedule looked like. Um, I had a good time with it because for us, we were in a conference, even though we were in New Jersey, our conference was all in the South. And so we had three teams. We played in Florida, one in Georgia, and then one in South Carolina. Um, and so in the fall time, we were flying every other weekend. We were gone for four days every other weekend. And I was fine with it. I enjoyed it. And I could, I kept up with school perfectly fine doing that. But I know a lot of people, would struggle with having to always miss their Thursday, Friday classes and or not get their homework and stuff done um, going into class. Um, so that was always important to me. And then asking the players, it was really helpful just to ask the players what their typical day looks like. So like I would go through and say, well, you wake up in the morning and what do you do? Um, not on their off day, but like on their busiest day, what does your busiest day look like? Like, are you like what, like, how does that kind of look? Cause if you don't see yourself fitting into what those players are doing every day, then you would need to kind of reevaluate what you're doing. Mm. That is great insight because you're right. Like how some of you touched on as a freshman, there's like six to eight study hall hours required. And what if you take heavy classes your freshman year and in the spring, are you guys up at 4:45 doing 5 a.m. workout? So I think that's a great question to expose kind of like, what does a real day in a life look like at NJIT or wherever you're going? So great question. Noel. So kind of hitting on like everyone. Um, when I went on like my visits, I'm not going to like beat around the bush, but like I asked about scholarship. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, like if I'm here kind of like top of your list, like how much money am I going to get? Like that was a huge deciding factor between my top school and my second school, like which one was which. Um, so I think that's super huge. Like if I'm going to go to school, my dad always says it's, it's a job. Like you're getting paid to go here. And so um, I think that's a huge aspect that you can't be like afraid to ask. Um, Cause like, that's, that's what you're going there for. And so if the coach likes you enough, hopefully he'll be like willing to share with you, like express that, like let you know that. Um, so that was a huge thing with me. And then um, kind of like what Madison said is in South Carolina, we have a very small conference. And so our furthest travel game is to Tennessee and it's four hours on the bus. Like mm -hmm. we don't fly anywhere. And so if we didn't play Friday and Saturday, we would go in the morning and be back by that night. And so as far as like schooling, everything that was super helpful to me, because just personally, I can't study, work, anything on the bus, travel, nothing. And so knowing I can plan around that one day off um, with schoolwork and tests and exams was super helpful um let's see what else oh I asked the team a lot kind of what Payne said is what do you think of the coach because like you can have your own opinion of the coach and like what he wants to tell you or she um but coming from the team of who's been with them um I think it's a different perspective um I think that's it mm. 
Perfect. I actually love that you brought up like the whole scholarship situation because like in life in general, like no one ever wants to talk about politics, religion or money. Right. But like in the world of athletics, every coach knows exactly how much money they have to award financially via athletics. Sure. They might be around the bush in regards to, well, you're going to have to apply through admissions to see how much academically you can earn, but they know exactly from year, like from year to year, how much money they have to give out. So if, if it is phrased and I encourage everyone, if you're never sure how to ask this question, please email me. I literally have it written out in an email. If you're never sure, I encourage you to bring it up. I'm glad Noel that you were bold with that. Um, because I feel like that's a question at the end when they're like, all right, do you have any questions for me after your campus tour? Like, it's definitely a, a polite thing, how you word it, but I still think that is wholeheartedly something that should be brought up on a campus visit. So thanks for sharing. Inky, anything from you, sister? Um, I guess I would just reemphasize, like, don't be afraid to ask anything. Even if you think it's like a harsh question, right way to phrase it mm -hmm. um i would say like that was my big regret is like you know coming in like with my situation i was like oh no like i'm the underdog like what if i upset my coach blah blah blah. this is like the next four years of your life like you don't want to go somewhere you're gonna be miserable because trust me i have friends who've done that and literally they spent the first semester crying to me and i was like i'm sorry but i'm having a great time you know like <laughs> don't be afraid to ask anything especially to your coaches because they're also going to ask you like, oh, where do you have us ranked right now? Are we in your top five? That kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, so want to reemphasize that. And then also um, with the players, I would definitely ask like, if you are interested in anything outside of volleyball, like bring that up. Like, what do you do outside of volleyball? Are there organizations mm -hmm. you're involved in, clubs, that kind of thing, especially if you want to get involved. Um, I know a lot of like D1, D2 schools, they can't go out for Greek life. Like, I'm in a sorority and I get to play volleyball and I have the time to be able to manage all of that. So if that is something you're interested in, like, you know, what is it you do out of um, school or volleyball, that kind of thing. Um, I had one more thing. Oh, with coaches, definitely not only asking like what their coach coaching personalities, but what the difference is between their on court and off court personality, because it could be completely different things. Maybe on court, they're a screamer, but off court, they like don't do anything or on court. They're super timid, but off court, they like want to be involved with you. Um, and like if that matches your style or vibe better then like definitely focus on that. Mm. That's super great insight. And Inky, I'm glad you brought up the asking about, all right, like college, this is a great thing, but like, what's, what's there to do? Like outside of volleyball, what is there to do in the city? What is there to do on campus? Because though it takes up a majority of your time, there's life to be enjoyed outside of just the court and what you do for volleyball. So great focus on that question. Um, okay. So, um, that's all the questions I have, but Can I do want to, Oh, Noel, Yeah, go ahead. This is okay. So I just thought, I don't know. Um, I don't know if this applies to anyone out there listening, but um, Anderson is actually a super small Christian university. And so for me, like it wasn't like a deciding factor, but like the religion and lifestyle, like really helped and benefited like my decision because they were like, oh, like we believe in this and this and this. And it was everything I agreed with, which I loved, which was a huge like drawing point. Um, so that helped a lot in the decision is like, as far as like setting like your boundaries and standards and stuff like that, if that's included, I think that's huge to like ask like, oh, like how strict are you? Like, what are your beliefs? This, this, and this. And like, we don't have Greek like life at our school just cause they don't agree with that. And it's super small. Um, so that's another thing to like keep in mind. Absolutely. Those are great questions to ask. Maybe see what the school believes or to see what extracurriculars they do and don't have. So yeah, thanks for adding that. Um, so yeah, now I want to add it up, um, open it up to anybody listening, anybody in the audience. I see we have about 20 people here. So about 15 parents, players. Um, if you want to, if you want to ask a question, um, if there's a raise hand feature at the very bottom, if you scroll over the bottom of the bar, there's a raise hand. So you can either raise your hand or, um, there's a chat. If you click on the little message bubble on the right hand side of the screen, you can type in your question. And I'll put in another plug for Melissa. Melissa's raffling off some private lessons and her link to enter your name into that, um, into that raffle is in the chat as well. So go ahead and click that before you leave the call. Um, but yeah, anybody have any questions for a specific player or to ask all the girls to see what they have to say?
Might be a quick night for you ladies. We did it in 40 minutes like I was hoping, but I would love if anybody has a question. Does anybody even want to know what their favorite colors are? <laughs> okay, here we go. We got a question. Thank you, Becky. Oh, and Caitlin. Oh, Trisha, they're flowing in like candy. Okay, we'll skip the color question for now. Becky's question. How did you prepare? Oh, yeah, sorry. Whoops, I jumped to Caitlin's. Becky, how did you know your school was yours? Um, Inky, let's start with you. How did you know Stevens was the one for you? This is the most cliche answer, but like, you know, like you step foot onto campus and you're like, this is home. I'm here. Um, I actually didn't even visit campus before committing and my parents were very upset, would not recommend. I just got very lucky, but I literally walked onto campus and I was like, wow. And then I walked into the gym and I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is my team. Like, you just feel comfortable. It's like, this is so... Some, Some people, people hate this word, but, like, you, you know the vibes, like, when you walk on. Oh, yes, okay. Okay, I'm going to open it up to you girls, like Elsa, Maddie, Peyton, Noel. If you have something you want to add, just unmute yourself. But, yeah, anything else outside of the vibes <laughs> or when you're on campus? Maddie, I saw you unmute, so go ahead, sister. Yeah, I mean, just, like, piggybacking off that, honestly, mine was more so of the players than the actual campus. Um it was, I mean, you go on campus, I loved the campus immediately, but as soon as I got to know the girls, it was kind of like, oh, I don't want to have to get to know another team. Like, this is my team now. Mm. Was kind of vibe that I got. Yeah. Um, I got the same kind of vibe as her, too. Um, I was one of those people, was, like, I used all of my official visits. I, like, you don't have to do that. But um, I would always stay the night with the girls, and I honestly – don't think I would have committed to the school um, I, if I didn't spend the night or like stay in the dorms or go um, like to dinner with the girls because um, you, your coach can say anything you want and um, they're that's what they're meant to do they're meant to sell their school and almost every campus like to me was felt the same so I the deciding factor for me was the girls and if I had like some, some potential, potential relationship, relationship there, like, like when, when I was on my visit. Um, I would echo all three of them in that, you know, when you get there, I knew when I stepped on campus. I came to campus a couple times before um, unofficial visits, and I think I got super comfortable with it the more I went. And also the team, and like Elsa said, you're going to know – you're, and spend a lot more time with the players than you are the coaches um, at the end of the day. Like, Jess, you said that you will spend every single day of your life the next four years with them. So it's a lot more enjoyable to be close with them than it would be if um, there was – I've – trust me, heard stories that of girls having a miserable time just because of their team, so. Mm. I'm going to add on to like all of those, and I'm going to kind of piggyback off of another question because I saw Christiana's question. Like at the end, I was going between about three like final school options, um, and I had went on the visit to the other one that I was going to go to before Anderson, and I was like, okay, yeah, like I could settle here. I could be okay with this and like make it work and kind of be happy here, um, like if I had to. And then the coach that I'm with now, I reached out and was like, hey, let's get you on official. Like, I promise just come out here, make it work. And I was like, oh, like, like kind of questioning it just went because I'd rather go and learn the hard way than missing out on an opportunity. And I went in again, like, I walked on and I was like, this is it. Didn't even, I hadn't even practiced with the players yet. And like, walked on the campus and I was like, I could see myself here walking through this exact same, like, yard, road, everything for the next four years. And I practiced with the players and I was like, this is my family. I was like, I wasn't going to settle for anyone else. So it is really, you know, we know. Thank you girls for sharing. Cause I think. I'm going to add on. On. Yeah, go ahead. Inky. Uh, You're totally fine. Sorry. Cause obviously we all said like, it's a vibe, but also um, that might not be the most accessible thing right now. So if, you know, you know make, make a pros and cons list. Be realistic. There, there were some, some schools, schools I visited, visited and I was like, oh, yeah, they're, they're like in my top five. And looking back, 
that was literally, was literally so, so dumb. dumb. It, was it was only because, because they gave me, like, a volleyball offer. Like, like don't base it off of that, that because really, like, I, like I, I said before, before, like, you're going to spend four years there. That's, like, you know, you don't want to be miserable in college. So make a pros and cons list. Outside of volleyball, what do you want out of school? Do you want a big school? Do you want a small school? Like, think about everything. Location, that kind of thing. But still be open at the same time. Just don't be dumb, I guess. Um, this is also going out to, like, all the people out there, so, like, I found Anderson through this thing called College Board, and so, like, our school offered, like, my school offered it, but we went on, and it was, like, pick your settings and your preferences, like, your size range, like, your location, your this and this and this and this, and it showed, like, the top schools, and that's actually how I found Anderson, it was in the top five, and I was like, oh, I've never heard of this, but it offered me the size I wanted, the location, the division, like, the competition level, um, stuff like that, and it's the second best university in the South for psychology, and so, like, not even volleyball, but if you're going to college, like, hopefully you're going to get, like, an education and pursue that afterwards, and so don't settle again, like, like just, just on volleyball, like, like, you have a life after it, which is one thing that I've had to, like, settle with, it's like, oh, wow, like, like volleyball's actually going to end here soon, and I'm going to have to leave it, and, and so, so go, go to a school that you enjoy everything else outside of volleyball, like, like, your classes, and, your, like, talk to, like, the advisors and stuff about, like, your teachers, and who's going to, like, if you know your major or what you're, like, looking forward to, like, ask about that, and go more into stuff outside of volleyball. Hmm. Um, last okay. thing, echoing Inky, I, hold on, I lost my thought. Oh, I know a lot of girls right now, especially right now, that since the recruiting deadline has been pushed back so much, the official visits aren't an option or have been pushed off until your senior, your, like, till last minute. Um, and so I've had a lot of girls who are 2021 commits and 2022 commits who have come down on unofficial visits because you have a limit of those. And since we have all said, when you know, you know, it doesn't have to be an official visit for it to count. Um, I know that I, I only took one official visit that was here after I committed and I took a couple unofficial visits that were like make or break decision makers for me. So it doesn't always have to be an official because you have unlimited um, unofficials. It's still equally as helpful just less perks for sure. Awesome. Yeah, I was going to hit on that, but just to echo Peyton, I would still, guys, if you can go, if the campus is open, get there. Don't make a choice. If unless you absolutely have to, don't make a choice based on a virtual tour. Please try to get there in person, even if it's unofficial, but we can talk more about that if you want to ever schedule a meeting to discuss that. Um, <sighs> Caitlin, I'm going to come back to your question. I just want the girls to finish speaking into Christina's question. Um, and I'm going to call on you since each of this is going to be different for you, but each of you kind of touched on just like when you know, you know, or the vibe, but I kind of encourage you to speak more into that. Like, yes, it felt like home, but like what specifically made you feel like when you saw the campus, like, so when she asked, what was your number one deciding factor, kind of try to speak into more of like, was it the size of the campus? Was it when you met the players, when you stepped foot into the gymnasium, you saw how amazing the facilities were and you're like, okay, I can envision myself playing it. Like, Speak into more about like what was the number one thing that made you choose that, and then yeah, how many how many schools were on your list, or what were you deciding between, and then maybe yeah, what was that ultimate deciding factor? So, um, Elsa, we'll start back with you, sister. Um, okay, well this might be a lot because I had a very interesting recruiting process, and um, for my school, I like I liked every school that I went to, so there wasn't one school I absolutely hated, and every school I really liked, but I always was that person that was like, well, what if there's a better option? So I would go to other tournaments, and I would like still kind of keep those schools in mind, but um, I would always like be like, okay, well, what if another school comes along like, at this next tournament? And so um, for me, like my coach called me and said that um, another girl was going to commit. So therefore, like I had to commit right away. And so um, I either commit now or like it could be gone. And I ended up not committing like that night. And so like in tears, I was like, I just lost like 
the school like that I really wanted, wanted to go to. So, so it was like kind of one of those things. It was like I knew in the back of my mind I was comparing my school to all these other schools. Um, this whole time without even like knowing that that was the school I wanted to go to. So my coach ended up calling me again and he was like, hey, like we still have money for you. Like if you still want to commit here. And I was kind of like, yes, like after he gave me that second chance, I said like, yes, I really want to commit here. And um, it was one of those things like I didn't know it sounds like cheesy, but like I didn't know I had it like until I lost it. So um, definitely don't suggest going to that stressful um, commitment, but I say like if it's something you compare to 24, like you're constantly comparing one school to another, or, like one school to the next, then like you know deep down in your gut, like that's where you want to go. Yeah, I I was actually sitting with Elsa on this night that this happened, and her her situation is very unique. So please don't think that you're gonna get a call from a coach and they're gonna offer you it's like get on the train or it's leaving the station. But like talking with Elsa, like whenever I would compare, like, cause another school she was looking at was in the Northwest and it was a D1 school, but I was like, so what do you think of this D1? And they're like, well, the crime rates are kind of high and like, they haven't been known well for this piece, but Angelo actually is like really safe. And I love the campus. And I was like, okay, so maybe will you like Angelo? Well, maybe let's just keep looking at D1s. Like I just remember that conversation so clearly just serving as this mirror for Elsa. So going back to what Inky said, a pros and cons list. And like Elsa just said, like, there is this space of like when you're comparing to every other school it's like but they don't compare to angelo angelo is probably your school so <laughs> um peyton what do you think yeah um one of my biggest things when i was things when i was were in my recruiting process was um making sure that i would still want to go to school if i wasn't in Godzilla, if something were to happen um, injury wise or whatever that may tell um, was that I wanted to be able to, be able to say that like if I wasn't playing volleyball I still would go here. Um, and when I came to campus, I could 100% say that like I would go here in a heartbeat without playing volleyball here. As much as like that is a major plus, and I absolutely love it. Um, that I wanted to make sure that that was that for me. So outside of volleyball, I, I love the campus, loved being in the South, um, kind of loved Oxford and the town as a whole rather than just the campus. Um, being super far away from home really wasn't it, one of my like deciding factors. So it was just more about the place itself. Um, I, to echo on your other question, I was deciding at the very end between two schools um, and I think it really just came down to where I most saw myself being, um, and just kind of what, not, I would, I'm not going to say what I was most comfortable with because both were very much out of my comfort zone. Um, so just kind of where I saw myself, where I saw myself being successful and, um, being like most myself, um, and loving kind of where I was at. So. I, I, I'm so many people don't get like lucky enough to um, love where they're at their freshman year, love where they're at their all four years. Um, so I've been really lucky to still enjoy it instead of. Awesome. Love what you have to say about choosing a school, not just based on volleyball. That was really good. Okay, I'm going to, Maddie, I'm going to have you go next, but I'm just going to give a quick segue. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat now if you can because i want to respect everyone's time and be down done here around 7 30. um so we're gonna go into like 30 second response mode so maddie noel inky like when you guys respond to this i want you to definitely share but like try to keep it around 30 seconds if you can okay maddie you're up okay just like i said earlier when i was picking my school and like the feel that i got was really just based on the players like how i the vibe of the players so like if i wasn't comfortable around the girls that i was with I knew that I wouldn't enjoy being there because especially, especially the school that I was at, it was going to be um, like academics were small, like their athletics was a small group. And so if I didn't like those people and those girls, I wasn't going to enjoy my time there. Yes. Love that. The players aspect is huge. Who you're going to be around. Uh, Noelle, your thoughts. Um, so Colorado is like known as like a desert state. And I don't know if anyone's been to South Carolina, but it's great. Like, like everywhere you go, like, like going, going to our, our campus, campus, we have like the overarching trees cover the roads. 
and so like driving in I was like oh this is so magical like this is beautiful and so like I fell in love like going to the parking lot and so I was like I could look at this every day like I could be here I could go outside like our school pays so much for like our landscaping and like gardening and stuff and so like our like, like flowers and gardens, gardens and, and like, like front lawn, lawn and stuff is huge because it's so nice outdoors like that's what we want to focus on and I'm a big outdoorsy person so I think that was one of the biggest like weather is huge to me so that was I think my biggest deciding factor mm. climate yes and then how many schools were you deciding there at the end Noel how many were on your final list my so final that I like picked between was three and then over total like I had narrowed down was about six or seven Okay, very good. I love that you had a list to choose from and just were like, well, I, I'm going to go here. That's awesome that you were that prepared. Cool. Inky? Okay, I would say aside from the pros and cons list, like um, make a list of your own values first. I went through like the climate. I wanted four seasons. I wanted something academically challenging. Um, even just stupid things like food. Is there food good? What, what is, is housing? housing? I, I get kicked, kicked off, off after freshman year. year. Like, like, do you, you want to be looking, looking for an apartment, apartment after freshman year? year? Um, like, like other things, things size, location, location already said that. that. Like, like, do you, you want to be in the middle of nowhere? nowhere? I, I definitely, definitely don't. don't. I, I want to be outside, outside of Colorado. Colorado. So, so like, I, I literally, literally had a list of all the schools I was interested in. Major, that was like a big deciding factor. And then, I'm really blanking right now, but Really, really just go, go through those lists. lists. If, if you, you want to do D1, D2, D3, D3 which, which ones are you? Don't, don't like bank on one, but like if those, those are your options listed, listed that, that kind of thing. thing. Um, so, so that, that like really helped, helped like having, having it laid out. out. And, and then also, also unfortunately, it also did, did come down to um, finances. And like, I know Noel touched on that. So again, don't be afraid to talk about that with your coaches. Cause also if they really want you, like they will, they will pull it out. Like I'm gonna be honest. Totally. I totally agree with that financial comment. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to reopen it, the floor back up to you girls as however you want to answer. But going to Caitlin's question, how did you prepare for calls with coaches? Um, so my biggest thing with preparing for call, uh, calls with coaches is I actually had a written out list of like different responses to have based on what they would say when they answered the phone, and, like how I would respond or I would have um, pretty much like a script for if I had to leave a voicemail, um, stuff like that. And then I always prepared with um, knowing some like facts about the school that I could ask, facts about the coach that I could ask. Like I would always ask, I don't like I always made a record from the last year before. So I was like, oh, your record from last year is this. How do you see this year comparing coming up on that? So like just kind of throwing out little things that will make that coach um, remember you and like keep your name. Like, oh, like, she, she knew her stuff when she told us. Hmm. 100% echo that. That's, I did the same thing. Question, list of questions. Because when you get on the call, you, if you're anything like me, I, I was shaking the whole time. And so it's helpful to have something right now. I think a lot is, it depends on every school. Like I had certain calls where the coach would talk the whole time, like asking me question over question over question. And then I had some schools that were like, okay, what do you want to know? Like, tell me about yourself, this. And so it was either they would talk the whole time or I would talk the whole time and we'd be like a good 50-50. And so again, like agree a list of questions. Um, but also like putting yourself in like their shoes, kind of like, oh, like thinking ahead of time, what would a coach ask me? Like, like, what, what do, do I want to know from the coach? And, and so I think, I think just preparing yourself from both perspectives um, so that they don't, like, ambush, ambush you with a question. You're like, uh, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So um, I, to go with all of them, I also um, just wrote down a list of questions. And I wrote down the basic questions, like basic five questions that I would say to any coach, like, where do you see me? What does your class look like? Kind of every question was like five questions for each school that I would just want to know in general. And then like, sometimes I would personalize each question to that school. So yeah, questions help. I will say also just in general, like really be prepared if it's a school you want to go to research it. Because even just from like the players on the team, aspect like, like when we get a recruit we go back to our coach and we're like oh yeah they were really interested and like them or like 
no, like, like we, we don't, don't want, want them. them. So, so like, like just, just be prepared, prepared for that. that. Hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm also, also going to add, add uh, I think it's just, just like, like, you can like text and, and like you can have emails and stuff, but, but phone, phone call, like, like if you, you haven't gone on like an in-person visit, visit is the first, first opportunity that you have to express your personality and feel the coaches. And, and so, so, like, get, get their, their sense, sense of humor, humor. Get, get their, their coaching, coaching style, like Madison said. said. Like, like, see how you connect, like, vocally with them. them. Um, just because I feel, I feel like you can feel them better as, like, a person and how you connect with them in person and over the phone. And, and so, so I think really focus on that aspect of the phone calls, too. too. Mm. All good. Good stuff. Questions. I love that. Um, walking to the, and then, like you said, Noel, like, texting and emailing is is awesome quick stuff but it's good to connect on the phone if you can i know i know you youngins your generation is moving out of phone calls but it is still good to connect voice to voice at least with college recruiting that's the only plug i'll put in with that um and then let's see trisha asked what software or method did you guys use to make your own highlight reels so again unmute yourself as you see fit um even though i had a recruiter i still had to make a recruiting video prior to having a recruiter and when I did it, I just used like the Microsoft video editor that was already pre-installed on my computer. I don't know if you guys have a different way of doing that, but that's my opinion. I used Tuttle all the way through my recruiting process. I used Tuttle as well. Like, even though, like, in the beginning I used Tuttle and then I got a recruiter, but um, Huddle did help for a little while. I had a Mac. Oh, sorry. No, um, so I use iMovie, and then I just like clip them together and like added circles. Like it doesn't need to be fancy. I was gonna exactly that. I used an iPad camera and iMovie, and then I added a really cool song in the background. <laughs> Yeah, so any of you people that have Macs, Macs already have, like, iMovie is as, as basic as you need. Just make sure you put your jersey number if you're not able to put, like, even, like, with Huddle. So what Peyton and Elsa referenced, it's, for those of you who don't know, Huddle is a website that is really focused on highlight film creation. So you're able to clip games of raw footage and put them all together to make a compiled highlight reel. Um, and then... Noelle and Inky referencing iMovie. Um, if you're not able to put the circle around yourself, that's okay. Just make sure you put your position and your jersey number so they know who to look for. Um, and then Ashley, I'm just going to go ahead and answer Ashley's questions. I'm an eighth grader. When should I start sending out emails to coaches? Um, this totally depends on what division you're looking at. Hey, Ashley, um, Peyton and Maddie, I'm not sure when you started, but if you're looking to go D1, Ashley, you want to start when you're a freshman. So like heading into this summer, I would start intentionally looking at maybe some schools that you're interested in. Um, maybe going to their summer camps this summer. Like if you are interested in Ole Miss, try to go to their camp that they're hosting this summer. Um, if you're looking at the Division II level or D anything besides D1, I wouldn't say to start getting really super antsy about recruiting until you're going into your sophomore year. But like Noel commented, you can never really start too early. But just remember that if it's before your junior year, the coach won't be able to respond to you directly. Um, NCAA rules just really want to protect you youngsters. Um, and so they don't want you getting too stressed about college recruiting until you're going into your junior year. So you can start as early as you want. You can send emails and videos and attend camps, but they can just never talk to you. They cannot talk to you directly about coming to their school as a prospective student athlete until your junior year. So um, if you have more questions about that, Ashley, or if anybody else wants to comment on that, by all means, go ahead. But Ashley, I would be more than happy to talk to you about that in a private meeting if you want to talk more about your recruiting. Okay, um, if there's no other questions, I don't see anything else in the chat, no hands are raised. So I just want to thank you guys for giving up an hour on your Sunday, especially you five girls. Thanks for just being willing to be honest and transparent about your college life. And uh, we do hope you the best. And thank you for being a part of Momentum and helping us out tonight. We'll talk to you girls thank soon. You. Yeah, thank you girls for being here. Good luck to everyone, everyone that was on here. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, thanks girls. And everybody be safe. Who, whoever's here in Colorado, stay warm, and we'll see you hopefully this week sometime. Thank Bye. you, ladies. Bye. Bye. Thank you.